It's a very good title because we found the house where I'm now living because the abbey doors that we were going to go to visit, we were going to visit the abbey, shut in our faces at lunchtime. It said closed between 12 and uh, 14 hours. So God lunches. And then everything that happens thereafter is really, you know, out to lunches. As well as, you know, it was true, he was lunching. So anyway, that's going to be coming out soon. So I have been very, very busy with doing things like that, you know, writing, uh, taking photographs because of uh, the, uh, the cover, uh, doing rewrites. Or there's a, you know, my life has really been to do with that recently. Now, have you been doing any type of acting or um, work in that field? Uh, I did some acting at the start of this year, and that was for a little French production. Uh, I knew, uh, yes, I knew the director and his brother, who's also a script writer, and so, uh, you know, they knew I was an actress, and they asked me if I wanted to do a little part in their, in their venture, which I did, and it was, you know, it was a lot of fun. And it brought back memories, but uh, you know, other than that, no, I don't go looking for work, and I don't even have an agent, so uh, you know, that would be rather difficult. Now, what part of France are you residing in right now? I'm in the middle of France, it's called the Auvergne, it is where the ancient volcanoes, the oldest volcanoes in Europe, this is in the middle of France, and it's called the Massif Central. And there I am, I live amongst volcanoes. <laughs> and I just hope they don't erupt, you know. <laughs> so far I'm told that they're dead. But it's a beautiful, it is an absolutely stunningly beautiful part of France because of the shapes. Uh, where I live, there is lots of forests and these amazing shapes of the um, of the volcanoes in the distance. It's just, uh, you know, it is quite fantastic. And also another thing, it is not very populated. Uh, where I live, the department that I live in is called the Ognoir, and it's the second least populated in France. The Lozère, which is slightly southwest of us, is the most populated. So I live in wilderness, you know, and I can I can take my car on the road and I don't see anybody for half an hour. It's quite amazing. So when I go to England, that really is a council shock for me, you know. Oh, traffic, oh my God, there's a big red bus, oh! I mean, like that, you know, so, uh, so anyway, you know, I think I'm, I'm in paradise here. Well, it sounds really beautiful. Yeah, it is. So we wanted to open you up to some questions and answers. We're going to go around the room and have um, you know, so every, the folks ask you some questions. We're going to have a wireless mic coming around. Um, so please just raise your hand and then we'll go around. So I just want to make sure you can hear us too, Catherine. I can hear you. Okay. Hello, Catherine. Hi. Hi, I'm Kevin. I'm from Vancouver. Hello, Kevin from Vancouver. Bonjour. Ça va? Um, I, I have an autographed copy of your book, and it is fabulous. Oh. I couldn't put oh, it down. Oh, thank, well, thank you. That's really sweet. I love to hear that because, you know, I didn't write it to bore people. So. <laughs> it, was, it was not boring. It was wonderful. Oh, good. Oh, good. I'm glad. I hope you will like the next one. I will definitely it's, be waiting for it. It is very funny. Really, I mean, not all of it, but some of it is really, I mean, I'm rereading it to make corrections, and I've laughed, and I'm the one who wrote it, <laughs> and I laughed my head off, you know. So anyway, I hope, I hope it would be enjoyable. Your first book was really fun, too. I, I, I laughed a few bits on it, too. I'll oh, laugh, yeah. Even. I think the birds were Sorry? laughing with me. The birds were laughing with me. It was cute. Oh. The birds. <laughs> that's, my, that's my way of being funny. Sorry, it's Canadian humor. Oh, but it's okay, it's okay. I thought maybe you have birds. No. Okay, you're not. <laughs> what, what my comment is for you is um, um, 
the last sequence or the last bit of metamorph touched me in a very unique way because when I was a kid, about seven or eight, I had a very lonely childhood. And every time I watched that, ep that last part of the episode, I cry because it touched me, Maya touched me to the fact that I felt like an alien when I was a kid. Oh my God. And oh. you actually have been a hero to me all my life. So I just wanted to tell oh. you that you touched me in a way that is very special to me and I thank you for that. Oh, well, I mean, thank you. Um, and why were you lonely? So you're talking about a very young age, so... I just, uh, was one of, I just was one of those kids that was kind of a, just a, kind of a, an odd sort, kind of a lonely yeah. person. I just, you know, I was very shy and yeah. know, I think a lot of us are at that age, but as I said, you know, Maya was really my hero when I was a kid because I felt protected under her. That may sound, oh. that may sound a little strange to you, but that's how I felt. No, I can... You know, you were a child, and I can see that you would have had an extra dimension within your imagination. And children believe that what they see on a screen is for real. So I think that that is, you know, part of you believed what you were, what you were watching. And, uh, you know, and I'm glad that it comforted you, so if I'm, that was what you're saying. I am saying, and I want to thank you, and... And you're a lovely woman, and I can't wait for your second book. Goody goody. So, <laughs> so merci beaucoup. Okay, thank you. Yes. Catherine, it's uh, Clifford from St. Albert, Alberta. Um, Hello. Uh, hi. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, I was wondering, have you seen your horses lately? And I was wondering if you had any signings coming up because I live in Canada. It's hard to do last minute climb over. Um, I, uh, I'm only doing, I've done already this year four lots of signings and I may be going back to England uh, towards the end of the, uh, towards the end of the year. Uh, that is all that has been, you know, and it's not even concrete yet, it's not for sure, so that's the only thing I can tell you. All right, but what did you say about the, what did you say? What did you, you say? I was wondering if you had a chance to go visit your horses and how they are. Oh, I did. I did. I saw my horses. I don't know whether you follow me on Facebook. Yes. But I did. I did write on Facebook that I saw them, and that they were in, really in a wonderful condition. And the man who's adopted them obviously loves them. He he will really look after them. But that's not going to be the last time I will be seeing them because I am going, you know, uh, I think maybe in September I'll have more time and I'll be able to go down there. So, no, it was, you know, it still makes me cry, but it's, it was the best solution. And I'm so glad that I, you know, I was introduced to this man who is just wonderful with all All right, thank you. Okay. Hello. Hello. I'm Christine from Edmonton, Alberta. I have, Hello, been, I have been a huge fan ever since Return of the Pink Panther. Oh! oh. <laughs> yeah, that was real. That was lots of fun to do. First of all, I would just like to wish you a belated, very happy birthday to two weeks late. That's okay, don't worry, don't worry. Thank you very, very much. Um, it's sweet of you to remember or, you know, to even know about it. So, um, that was, thank you. And like Kevin, I really enjoyed reading your book. I started reading yep. it at 5 p.m. when I found it in my mailbox from Amazon, and I kept yeah. reading straight through till 2 in the morning when I finished it. It was a wow. fabulous, fabulous book. And I can't wait to read the sequel. Okay. And you say the sequel is going to be very funny. If you would, yeah. if you felt like making it even funnier, I have a suggestion. I yeah. would love for you to include in it as an appendix the Waiting for Fellini story that you wrote for the fan magazine, which is absolutely one of the funniest stories I have ever read in my entire life. And a wider <laughs> circulation of that story would be great. 
Oh God, I can't, I won't be, you know, it won't be in the next book because that's not really about my career. I won't mention my career. But you know, that's, I thought about that much too late. I didn't tell that story. I should have told that story. I completely forgot about it. You, when you're writing, you get, get into like it's a, you know, a, a stream of consciousness and you're just writing, writing, and one thing leads to the other and then to the other. And, the, and somehow I missed out on that story. How silly. Because it was funny. It's absolutely right. <laughs> yes, well, I've said it. I set the tree alight. <laughs> well, it's, it's been wonderful being able to chat with you. Thank you for being part of the convention. And it's time for someone oh. else to have a turn. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you very much. Nice to talk to you. Hi, Catherine. This is Terry from Seattle. Hello, Terry from Seattle. Terry. I know you, Terry. <laughs> first of all, Terry you're... Lee from Seattle. Oh, yeah. First of all, you're looking wonderful. Um, oh. I wanted to ask you a question, but before I do that, I wanted to say immensely enjoyed your book. I have the audio version of it. Went on a very oh, yeah. long car trip. So that kept me company, and literally a mile from getting home, I finished your book, so it worked out perfectly. And ah. maybe if I meet you in a restaurant someday, I'll have the nerve to send you a Sean Connery type note. Oh, oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if you're gonna get that. Anyway, I was hoping... <laughs> well, I'll uh, I don't know how I would answer that. I don't know how I take your answer either, but anyway. Um, I wanted to ask you about your recent uh, uh, movie role. Can you tell us the name of the movie and what your role in it was, please? Well, it's called, uh, in, in French, uh, it's Le Soleil dans sa poche. Uh, the sun in your, in, it's not dans sa poche, dans son sac. Uh, the sun in her like a handbag mm. and uh, I play you know it's not a big part at all uh, I am somebody that this young woman uh, who dreams about certain things all the time and it's all to do with money she finds money by accident uh, she's taken somebody to the hospital and they, get, you know, the uh, security people come in, uh, you know, uh, take him into emergency. She's in the car and she realizes there's a bag in the back of the car and it's full of money. And so she now has these dreams about how she's going to get rid of this money, not get rid of it, you know, what she should do with it. And I am slightly involved within, you know, I'm a very wealthy woman, I have a chateau, she comes to see me and we discuss, but you know, uh, that's about, you know, the, 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 the part. It's not, uh, it's not a huge dramatic part, but it's nice. It's nice enough. And I got very nice to me. Thank you. It's great to see you. Okay. All right. Okay. Don't forget, I don't know, it will be in French. So, uh, well, the Canadians will see it. Uh, <laughs> le soleil, le soleil dans son sac. Sun in her bag, so don't forget that. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Catherine. Yes. Dear Catherine. Hello, yes. Let me take it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is so lovely to see you. You look wonderful. It was a great, oh. great thrill to see you last year. And I was yeah. so, so hoping that you would join us in this one. Um, yeah. Sadly, not in the flesh, but you just look great. You sound great, and uh, this has been a lovely convention. Very yeah. sweet, very successful, intimate and lovely. Um, Wonderful. We do uh, love what... This looks like a fat. Are you in your kitchen or you live... No, this must be a living room. No, I'm in the living room, but oh. if you want, I can, I can take the computer with me and just show you where I live because nobody knows where I live. I can't go too far because then the Wi-Fi doesn't work. But would you like that I did that? Yes. 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 Oh yeah, but well, the ceiling is wood, you know, it's yeah. all proper trees and we're the ones yes. who had that done. 
because it was a complete ruin when we bought the house. So uh, you know, this is all our our doing. But I'll just I'll just show you a little bit, okay? <laughs> that was the chair. Now, <laughs> that was not what you might have thought. That's how. Now, those are just some nice pictures. The two on the side, Bill's son did those, Dan Hayes, who's now quite famous uh, as a painter. Yeah. And he was about 19 when he did those. Anyway, worth a fortune. Um, sorry? Worth a fortune. Oh, <laughs> well, I wouldn't sell them anyway. <laughs> so now, I will show you this. This is, I should walk very slowly, this is the fireplace. Do you put logs in there in winter? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, winter. I came, and, I came and stayed a winter in France four years ago. We stayed in Fayence, and it was the coldest winter in Europe in 60 years. <laughs> and we had a fire just like that, and thank God for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is very, very necessary, even though I do have central heating, but it is very necessary. Uh, on occasion to, to have a fire. Is so, uh, uh, I, have, I have a chuck for me, are you kidding? Of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> now this is, this is my kitchen. Oh, nice. And because I'm really a cook, these are all of my spices <laughs> <laughs> that I use. It's a tiny kitchen, but I made meals when I was when it was running as a guest house, I made meals for 14, 16, <clears throat> 18 people. Now this is the lower kitchen. I'm going to try to take you through to the dining room, the big dining room. Is it just one you, you You said you make meals for 14 to 16. How many bedrooms do you have? <laughs> well, I have had, I work with six bedrooms. And some of them slept four, oh. one of them slept five, so all you had to do is, if you had a bum on every bed, <laughs> then you would have that amount of people. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Can you see that? Oh, it's magnificent. Yes. So, uh, and right. this table, the table Bill painted, oh, wow. we were given the oval, and then he painted, I don't know how much you can see of it, but it's beautiful with little mosaics. It's you, really lovely. You play Monopoly on that. <laughs> you can have a little train that goes back. Now I shall take you back into the day. I'd have loved to have taken you outside, but the Wi-Fi doesn't go. This house looks like it's about 500 years old. Well, I will show you something. It won't be... Here, look at that. Can you see above the door? Yeah, no. 18, 1814. Okay, that was probably when it was renovated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, I think well, it's older. It's even older. Yeah. Because it was built. This this bit was built on top of the original, which was in the basement. Well, those walls look about two feet thick. <laughs> they are yeah. absolutely. But it's an Auvergnat house. So, you know, and the Auvergne is very cold. So, they, you know, the peasants in those days, they knew how to build. And they built for their, for their comfort also. The absolute, you said the ceiling looks really good. Well, above the ceiling is my bedroom. But it used to be just for animals. There was a pig that was kept. <laughs> uh, there were chickens, there were rabbits, yeah. and the floor was full of straw. So that was insulation for them in those days. It was perfect. They thought everything out. <laughs> but all of that description is in the next book. Oh. <laughs> uh, we're all dying to read both books. Uh, I certainly am very uh, interested and will do so. And I'm going to hand you back to Roy and the rest of the folks that want to say hi. Oh, Wonderful oh. to see you, darling. Oh, bye-bye, Nick. <laughs>